Forty years ago, only a handful of farmers in Benway State, middle belt of Nigeria, were growing soybean. The crop was generally thought more suitable for large-scale commercial growing and industrial processing. But today, the story has changed. This golden bean is grown in the farms of resource-poor smallholders in the Guinea savannas of Nigeria and other parts of sub-Saharan Africa. I actually started working in Nigeria in 1983. We were conducting soybean trials many places in the country. And I never saw a soybean in Nigeria except in my own research plots uh, until I traveled to a very remote village um, in Benue State and found just a few farmers growing soybean. And um, these farmers were just uh, growing it for their home use and they sold some soybeans to some traders that took the soybean to southern Kaduna state to make a fish food and uh, so there was really almost no market no real use for soybeans so only a small area was grown <laughs> When IITA started improvement research in 1974, the average yield per hectare in Africa was 660 kgs per hectare. 36 years later, using IITA developed varieties, the average yield in West African countries increased by more than 50% and 67% in the whole of Africa equivalent to 1.1 tons per hectare over 20 years of breeding effort. 21 African countries now produce soybean. Nigeria has the highest six-year average production, followed by South Africa and Uganda. The major driver of increasing soybean production in all the countries in Africa where it's being grown now has been the establishment of a strong market for soybean. And this strong market has come about mainly used by the poultry industry because um, soybeans are bought by the oil industry. They crush the soybeans, extract the oil, use, are used as vegetable oil in the homes of people. And then the high protein cake is bought by the poultry industry to feed the poultry. Then the second thing that has driven it is the acceptance of soybean in home use. And so uh, when farmers grow soybean, they keep part of it to eat in the home and they sell part of it to industry. And now in most of the major cities in Nigeria, people buy soybean in the market. So that's another market. In Nigeria, for instance, the soybean industry quickly advanced. Integrated processing, use and marketing aspects followed efforts to develop improved cultivars. This is a testament to IIT's research for development R4D in soybean that produced high yielding and stable varieties, tolerant or resistant to biotic and abiotic constraints, and promoted processing and use. It has increased our raw material base significantly. Uh, before now, this particular area was not within, was not included in our supply base but you know with the the coming up of this project we've been able to add up a kind of expand our supply base for soya beans and it's been very helpful to us and it has helped us in our planning we are comfortable that we'll always get additional soya beans. In 1985, to improve nutrition and to create demand, ITA began the development of small-scale and home-level food processing technologies. A study funded by the International Development Research Center, IDRC Canada, found that soybean had been successfully used to increase the protein content of traditional foods. New products, flour, milk, baby food, had been developed and introduced. 
small-scale processing machines were introduced. Wide commercialization increased markets from two in 1987 to 42 in 1993. The number of retailers also ballooned. In Benway State, more women were involved in soya bean production. New IIT varieties were widely adopted and grown by farmers. In another project implemented by IITA with funds from the Canadian International Development Agency titled Promoting Sustainable Agriculture in Bornu State, PROSAP, soybean was also used in boosting incomes and health benefits to farmers, consumers and processors. When we arrived in Bruno, there was no soya being produced in large quantities. We had to beg farmers in that project alongside other crops. We carried maize, cowpeas, and processor technologies, granite, sorghum. They grabbed all those things, but it was difficult to convince farmers to produce soya bean. We had to convince the farmers to try, and we assured them that we will link them to the market. That singular action of developing the value chain, bringing improved varieties, training the farmers how to produce them, setting up community-based production to make seed available, and then linking those farmers to a market did the magic. Before, we don't know the use of soya beans, but now we have learned a lot from Prosop. They train us how to do milk, how to do our uh, many things, about 12 or 13 items that we use with soya beans. And even the price in the market passes some of the, our crops that we use to uh, do here in our village. And we have, I have benefited a lot because Soya beans last year, I sold one back 12,000. And that money, I use it in different ways and I enjoy it. So far, some 17 IITA bred tropical soybean varieties have been released by National Agricultural Research and Extension Systems of several African countries. The released varieties have gone into the farmers' hands. They've been produced in uh, large areas in Nigeria and used in many different ways. These varieties have also been tested in different countries, including Benin, Ghana, Uganda, Malawi, and now Zambia, Mozambique. All these countries have used the germplasm that was developed for a start from Nigeria, tested them under their local conditions, and selected for those that are suited to their circumstances. These show considerable increase in grain and fodder yields, improving soil fertility in the savannas and enhancing the yields of subsequent crops such as maize and sorghum. As you know, um, soybean is a legume and uh, it has good potential to uh, trap nitrogen from the atmosphere. And when it is grown in um, association with cereals, then it makes a contribution to the cereals. And, there is also a residue so long as the whole crop is not pulled out of the ground. One, it's uh, the saving to the farmers in terms of nitrogen. Um, second, the contribution it makes to uh, companion crops. And then three, the fact that you are not putting a lot of um, chemical fertilizers that could lead to acidity and all that in the soil. So really, it, it is a stabilizing factor in the atmosphere. IAT recently expanded breeding of its West African breed varieties to South Africa, where cultivation by small-scale farmers is rising because of better grain storage quality compared with other legumes, large leaf biomass, and a secure commercial market. From very low production, now Nigeria produces 27% of soybean in Africa. Eastern Africa, countries like Zambia, Malawi, Mozambique, need this technology, what already have been established here, to increase the soybean productivity by uh, reducing new varieties adapted to the region. So this is the major objective. Commercial soybean farms are now found in South Africa, Zimbabwe, and Zambia. There are also export possibilities to Europe and Japan. I would say in every African country, there is huge demand for soybean. So for every million dollars 
of soybean production that is grown in Africa. Africa saves a million dollars of uh, getting foreign exchange that they could be using for doing something else. And that million dollars is going into the pockets of farmers in Africa. But um, we have to, to improve uh, the infrastructure, basically. And, but this is not specific for soybean, it's just specific for all of agriculture. Ayo yo a 